Today I'm out in, uh, I'm just north of Tacvalaran, and I'm on my way out to see the Tarsier. The Tarsier Sanctuary, outside of Tacvalaran to the north of it, and I don't have a GPS, remember the name of the city, Corella or something like that. Uh, just north of it, about 10 or 15 kilometers outside of Tacvalaran, uh, Ball. I'm gonna go up there and see what they look like. Uh, they're the cutest little monkeys, and they've got really big eyes, and they're really, really small animals. I've seen a few pictures of them, and when I was back in Texas looking to move here, I saw them. I thought, man, I gotta go see those. So that's where I'm going today. Um, stopped here on the side of the road. Uh, should be getting up there close, but I stopped on the side of the road because I saw the most unusual uh, house here uh, built off the side of one of these. Chocolate Hills. I'm going to take you up into Chocolate Hills up in the north end or actually the central part of the hole here in the next day or so. And they're going to have a lot of these little hills that look similar to this one here. And I'm, I'm going to show you one here. What they are, they look like little lava pimples that showed up when they were doing the construction. Uh, or actually when the earth was being built. I've got a bunch of kids around me so I'm losing my track of mind here. Uh, but here's, here's a picture of, of a house where somebody's utilized, taking one of these little chocolate hills looking homes and they've, they've carved out the area here and put their pilings in and built their house on the side of it. And then they've got another row of homes over on this side done up real nice with the tin roofs and the bright green colors and the turquoise colors. But it's built right on the sides of these little hills here. More than likely they're going to be a single family that owns the property here. Um, but these, these little mounds here are little lava domes where lava was, apparently was, was poking up and pushing the ground up when the Philippines was being born. Okay, well I wanted to stop here and show you what this house looked like. And then you can see where they've, they're harvesting this out. They've had some, they haven't done anything with it in a while it looks like. But they do their t uh, terracing in here and then you, you lined up with uh, coconut trees around it. And then they've got the banana trees. Typically when you find a find areas like this where they've done their terracing, they'll also have banana trees and coconut trees as another cash crop and, and a food source for them. So just a few miles away, let me get up there and see what it looks like. But just another kilometer down the road or less, I uh, found this little city here, came into this little city called Pablo Sean. Um, there's, there's the city map of it there, or the, the area map of it. And they've got, this is a small town, it's an older town, of course. And all of this area out here is they're going to be their uh, plaza. Uh, they've got a, looks like a tennis court out there, a basketball court over there. You can see the blue concrete. And here's their multi-purpose hall. Uh, they're under the, looking at this sign over here, the Bahal Earthquake Assistance uh, Source Funding. So they've had some damages here on this building, I can't see them now, but you can see this older building back here. You can see where the bricks have been dislodged and, and further down, it, you can see them on the ground. Uh, so they're getting, they're getting some government assistance to help rebuild these buildings. Um, let me take you around over here where the church is. This is an unusual church with some unusual designs. Uh, obviously this is, this is an, all an add-on from the original construction where you've got the, you got a metal, looks like looks like metal is sheet metal that's what it is that round dome with the round windows back there is sheet metal it could be a lookout post too just like the other places had their lookout towers um, they could have been made out of wood years ago or bamboo and then modified and rebuilt with it with the metal but the rigid this is the entire original structure a lot of times you'll see part of a church up here in the front and then you'll see where they've added on as a congregation uh, grew then they added on to accommodate them but this this whole structure has been the same, looks like the same. And you've got a couple of minor cracks over those windows, a little one down here and one, another one back over here. But the Bahol earthquake two years ago uh, didn't do, do hardly any damage to this at all on the outside. Although I don't know what it's like on the inside. That's a lot of concrete up there. It's a lot of weight on that structure. Uh, regardless of the height, there's still a lot of concrete, a lot of bricks and rocks behind that fascia. And it withstood, withstood the earthquake pretty well. This is 7.2 earthquake, by the way. I failed to mention that before. Uh, 7.2 here two years ago, I believe November. Uh, November 2015 will make it uh, two years. So it's almost two years now. But you can see this front up here, this fascia up here in the front, it held it pretty good. 
And this statue over here in the plaza, it, it, it's held, it, it's okay, it was, it's in intact. And here's your plaza. And this is a little community called Corella. And that's where we're at now, and that's where the Tarsiers are. So let me go over there and find this, them. This is the Corella uh, Town Hall, this is the city hall. Uh, founded in 1884. It's an old city. And they're adding on to it. I think Pablo Sean is meaning the county or the community or large barangay. I'm not really sure. Uh, but the town itself is named Corella. Built in 1884, founded in 1884. I knew the, gen <clears throat> I knew the general area where the Tarsier Sanctuary is. And as I passed this sign, I came by it real slowly and found out that this is where it's at. Uh, so that's this way, it's open at 9 to 4 p.m. And here comes two tour buses coming out of here now. So they have their own guided tours. beautiful girls they're on the bus and I'm stuck on a motorcycle by myself what a disappointing day well let me get down here and look at the tar sears quit thinking about the girls well, I made it down off the road, main road off the main road it's about a half a kilometer here um, I believe there's a hundred and seventy seven hectares in here for, uh, for the sanctuary uh, I'm gonna try to uh, get off here and get more information but I think it's 177 hectares here and the man that was originally here doing this, doing the collecting these uh, tar shears, we're, we're collecting them and selling them to collectors around the world and zoos and whatever, private collectors. Uh, so he he had such a love and a passion for the tar shears that uh, when the government got involved or whatever, and they put putting restrictions on them and the endangered species, that they actually hired him. And I don't know which guy it is. Maybe I'll, I'll meet him here. But he he was hired because of his his love for the animals and and his knowledge of, of how to take care of them. So this is reserved. They've got signs up here: "Don't blow your horns," "No loud music," all of that. You know, all of the the bad stuff. You don't want to you know, scare these little animals. So let me get off and, and I hear a bunch of voices in these houses here. I don't see any signs. Just a couple of couple of buildings. So I'm gonna walk in here and and see if I can, you know, meet these folks and get in here and show you these funny little animals, the cute little animals actually. But this is this is really a pretty area in through here. I just talked to a couple uh coming in here or actually they were leaving. Um well let me see, stop here and see what this Okay, about the tar sears. This is what they look like. Really cute looking animal. Little bitty. They're supposed to be the t smallest, smallest something in 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 the world. Uh, they're they're nocturnal, huh? Shouldn't be disturbed during the daytime like a bat. They commit suicide during captivity due to trauma. So from touching, noise, and light. So you don't want to mess with these little guys. Just leave them alone. They're one of the slowest fetal growth of any mammal taking six months to reach a birth weight of 23 grams. That's pretty small. They're solitary and territorial. A single tar shear needs to be have at least a hectare of space per individual. And there's 177 uh, hectares in here, I believe. And they don't belong in cages. Uh, the couple that was leaving, they said that uh, they they will take the they will take you on a guided tour. Maybe that's with them going up now. Let me try to catch up with them. And like a lot of things here in the Philippines, between 12 and 1 o'clock, things shut down. And so uh, the fellow that takes you in the bushes to show you where they're at, they're they're all having lunch. And there's your CR. If you need one, I got some resting spots for you and the and the people. 
All right, here's the recre here's the research. Welcome to the research center. And here's a neat little building that they've built. Pretty nice. Hello. Hi. This is the inside. And I'm going to get my water. Go ahead. I'm doing video.